Okay, this is the 2018 GL2 map. When you first look at it, it looks like it's going to be very complicated. However, think of it as being more of a challenge, um, one that you can break down into sections and uh, start off by interpreting the map, decide which is the youngest feature and then work your way back in time. So the first step is to interpret the different outcrop patterns and what does that mean? Well, if we look at the, the map, um, one of the first things which stands out is this diagonal um, line that's cutting across every single feature. Uh, it's got a sheet-like morphology. Um, this looks like it's a dike. Um, because it's a straight line, it's going to be vertical. Other features which stand out um, from the map are um, the faults, F2, which is a bendy line, so it's not vertical, but it's not as bendy as F1 which would suggest that F2 is quite steep fault. And in fact, the exam paper tells us that the, that would have been dipping 75 degrees towards the west, whereas F1 has got a lower angle. And in fact, um, the exam script says it had got 18 degrees towards the east. Looking at the age relationships, F2 cuts across F1 and it's displaced it. Um, so F1 would have had, is the same fault but F2 has displaced it and the, these little marks here tell us that this side has moved down relative to this side. Other features that we can see on the map is an unconformity. Um, it is at the base of rock unit H um, and you can see it um, on two parts of the map, on the um, western and on the eastern side. And we can see that it truncates across loads of different boundaries. So I'm marking on the unconformity now. And if we look at the on the um, eastern side of the map, we can see that the unconformity is younger than F1 because F1 has been stopped by the unconformity itself. Um, all the bits of information we've been told, we've got two spot heights um, on the same boundary on different sections of the map. On the eastern side of the map, it's 570 metres, and on the western side, it's at 290 metres. So again, it fits with the idea that the unconformity is older than F2, and this side is lower compared to this side. So this side's down thrown, this side's up thrown, which fits with the cross marks that we've got on F2. Okay, so, We've um, got faults, we've got an unconformity, we've got one igneous body across it. Um, there should be some folds on the map as well. So if you look for repetition of units, the one that stands out to show the uh, repeating is rock layer C, which is this grey layer here. This white layer isn't repeated, but these two are. And it's again, it's repeated over here. So we've got a series of folds. If we look at the dip arrows, uh, the APT for this particular fold goes underneath F1 and the dip arrows tells us that it's a, an antiform. And these antiform have got dip, uh, limbs with unequal dip, suggesting that this is going to be an inclined axis. If we move further to the west, uh, rock layer C is repeated again. This layer in between isn't. So there's another fold APT in the middle. This time it's a sinful. Okay, and if we go on this side, we've got the three layers again. And if we move towards the east, the dip starts off at 60 and then we've got uh, changes to 30 degrees. So somewhere in here, we cross another fold APT. Unfortunately, we don't see these other two layers elsewhere on the map down at the bottom. So everything underneath this particular fault is going to be rock unit E. OK, I've transferred all the information that I can gather from this area from layer X to Y onto my strip of paper. I've noted the position of the dike, um, the faults, and the unconformities, noted down the height of the unconformities at the different um, sides of the cross section. 
Um, I've not marked on the full day PTs yet because I know some of these boundaries are going to have to predict where they're going to be um, underneath these major structures like F1 um, and the unconformity. But we'll come back onto that. I'll show you how to do it um, with a different coloured pen once we've constructed as much as we can from the cross section. OK, so first things first, we need to work out our age relationships. So where do I start? Which is the youngest feature? What do I put on first? Well, we know this dike cuts across all the faults and the unconformity and the folds. So we're going to start with that. So I'm going to do the dike first. Once I've done the dike, um, I have to decide, is it the unconformity or the faults? Well, if I consider it, we know that the F1 is older than the unconformity, but the unconformity have got different heights on either side of F2. So that means F2's got to go in first. Then I'm going to put in the unconformity and rock layer um, H, which is above it. And then I'm going to put in F1 because F1 gets stopped by the unconformity. Um, and the layer of uh, rock which is directly above F1 is um, rock layer um, B. Once I've done that, I'm going to do the layers which are underneath the, the F1, which is all the folded layers. And when I do the folded layers, I think I'll start over this bit of the cross section. And then we're going to have to sort of determine um, where these boundaries are underneath it. And we'll come back to that again later. Okay, let's start this cross section. I've got my order which I'm going to do things. I've noted down from the exam paper um, the angles and the direction of the different faults. And I've got all the outcrop pad, um, positions of all the boundaries um, from along the line of section. So let's get started. So the first thing first is the dike. I know the dike is vertical because it's straight um, on the map. So let's put that one in first. So youngest feature, it cuts across everything. So I'm going to extend it all the way up to um, the top of the cross section. And it's rock unit G. You could cover that in later if you have time. OK, the next thing I need to do is I need to do F2. F2 is dipping 75 degrees towards the west, which is towards X. F2 outcrops there. So let's measure the angle, 75 degrees. Remember the dike cuts across it because it's younger, so I'm going to stop F2 there. I'm going to label up F2 up here um, and we know from the map that this side is a down throw and this side is the up throw side so I can put those arrows on straight away. Okay so we've done the dike F2 next thing to put in is the unconformity in H um, we know the unconformity is horizontal and the layer above it is so so let's mark those on. On this side, the fault is at 570 metres. On this side of the fault is at 290. So if I've done it accurately, it should work out. So so it's layer H above it. The dike is younger, so the boundary gets stopped by it. H is above it. And that works with our sense of displacement. OK, so the next one to put in is F1 and layer B above it. So we know that... Ooh, there we go. Um, F1 outcrops at the surface there. 
and it also outcrops at the surface there dipping 18 degrees towards the east which is towards y gets stopped by f2 the layer of rock above it is rock unit b same on this side, 18 degrees towards the east. Get stopped by the unconformity. The dike cuts across it. Which rock unit it be at the top? And let's put the half arrows on because you know this side is the up throw and this is the down throw side. Down through and side, down through and side. Okay, so what we need to do is the folded layers. Now a lot of this we're going to have to go back to the map and do some projections, but let's put the layers on which we can do first, which is these two layers here. I'm not going to take the boundaries too far down because we know they're going to come back up again, but we don't know where just yet. So they're both dipping 60 degrees towards the east. So this is right D, this is C, this is E. And they go up to the fault. We'll put those in we'll finish this off again in a minute or two okay so i've got to go back to my map to do this section now i've got to project where these boundaries are so i know where they're going to be underneath um, f1 and underneath the unconformity so it's not perfect but you can mark things on like this on the map to project where you think they're going to be this one's out of the line of section, so I'm not going to worry about that one. Um, lost one. There it is. Okay, so let's mark these on. Okay, I think there's going to be a sinform axis there. And an anti-form axis there. So this is rock unit C in between and everything's going 60 degrees that way. Everything's going um, 30 degrees that way. We've got rock unit E in the middle. On this bit here we've got rock unit C and then we've got rock unit D again. This one is going that way at 60 degrees. So we should have enough now to finish off the cross section here. Let's start at top. That one's there. So we've got rock unit C this side, rock unit E there. Move it down a little bit. So the next boundary is here. The next boundary is there. Is there. So this is C in the middle, that's D. And everything from there to there is a it's going 60 this way. Um but we'll go with 30 that way. Okay, I'm gonna start off with these ones here. Let's start these. So these two, that one's going 60 degrees towards the east. So now it gets stopped by the dike and so he gets cut across by the dike it gets stopped by f let's get 30 degrees that way i'm not going to extend it too far because i don't know where it's going to go yet same for that one as well
Now I know this and that line is going to join up because it's got C boundary, E boundary. This one's dipping 60 degrees this way. Those two are going to join up like that. No, I haven't got it very. There's two centimeters. Those two folds in. Let's cross silver over here. Um, we know from the cross section, sorry, the map that we've got another sin form that we've got to put in. So C, D, and E needs to come down, and the boundaries need to come up here again. We know from the map that everything up to um, point Y on the map is all E exposed. It's, uh, is E direct underneath it. If I use this line as a guide, somewhere in here we're going to have the APT. It's not very accurate, but it'll give us something to go on. E, C, and D again. That's it. Finished. <laughs>